Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for showing up after a heavyish lunch, I'm guessing. So, to make sure you don't fall asleep, we have four very eloquent, experienced uh, news professionals with points of view that have made impact, that make people notice what they say. And thank you all for joining us. We are honored and privileged that all four of you are here with us. So this is called Calling Out Our Own. Um, the idea is to dissect and discuss the idea of news platforms commenting, critiquing, reporting on other news platforms. Is it a good idea or does it discredit news with one person calling out the other? And just for many of you who are very young over here, uh, I mean, since the coming of social media, this has become a normal thing when you see on digital news. But uh, earlier, it was very rare for news platforms to call each other out, um, as, whether on broadcast or in newspapers. It was very rare to name another news organization. And I'm sure Shekhar will uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but rare, you know, I used to see Indian Express and Hindu calling each other out for, for, for a few reports. But other than that, I, I don't really remember news organizations you know, com uh, reporting on another news organization. So Sevanti is the pioneer of that. She uh, has a website called Hoot, although it's not active anymore. It's still archived. So you can check it out, am I right, Sevanti? Uh, and it was started about 11 years ago or 12? 17. 17, oh my god, 18. So that's when the internet came about. So I quickly had to calculate in case this was also one of those claims that I sent. Uh, that was the last time Indian, ma Indian markets had such a bad July. <laughs> yeah, as Shekhar says, 2002. But I just had to make sure it wasn't one of those claims that I sent a digital photograph over email when there was no email. But yeah, it's not one of those claims. But uh, so Sevanti, what was the motivation for you to start that? Uh, and how did other news organizations or news professionals react to the hoot? Okay, so uh, I started it in 2001, early 2001. And as if to confirm that I should have started it, the month after, right after that, Operation Westland happened with Telka doing this enormous sting and all kinds of implications. So uh, I started it in 2001, which was 10 years after satellite TV had come to India. And when satellite TV came, everybody wanted to write about all the terrible things that were happening. So a lot of newspapers, uh, everybody had TV columns. Nobody, uh, nobody wrote about anything other than TV. You, they didn't, you didn't have anything on print. And there were all the usual range of media issues which are there today were there then. You had media ownership issues, you had uh, crime coverage, which was an invasion of privacy, you had all kinds of things. But newspapers were not written about, so in fact, there would be discussion among some of us. Uh, I remember Shekhar came to one of the early meetings and people took like 500 bucks out of their pockets and said, kuch karo. So that wasn't enough, but <laughs> Uh, the point was, you couldn't write about the media in media, so you had to have another platform, uh, which was online, because it was, we thought online was cheap and free. So that's how I started it. Because it didn't exist, but what did you hope to achieve? This would do what? It would improve the standard of coverage, it would make for exciting reading? What, no, what was it's, the idea is not exciting reading. See, Media Watch essentially is about media accountability. You cover all sectors, nobody covers you. So it was that if there are issues, and if the Times of India or the Hindustan Times or the Hindu is doing something, you can write about it somewhere. You, know, you don't just write about TV. I, I had already written a TV column for 10 years before that and had been very clearly told, please don't touch print. So yes. the idea was just accountability for all media. Uh, and Shekhar, uh, you can tell us what you think of this practice, but before that, since you are a veteran of print, why was there this conventional kind of wisdom that like she was instructed, don't write on print? Why did print not comment on print? Where was it? I don't think there was a, ever any instruction. I think. Uh, I know the reason you invited me here, so I will do my bit of, uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you value for money and your love, <laughs> both. Uh, you structure, uh, I might question the way you have drafted this question. Should media criticize media or not? 
before media starts criticizing, media should cover the media. And before media covers the media, we, media must have the ability to cover the media. So what you have today, uh, and the reason in the past media did not cover the media, essentially was because media did not know how to cover the media. And then came magazines like India Today, which covered the media well, and I used to work there. Media Today did great stories on the Indian Express when the Shori Goenka issue happened. India Today did great stories on what was happening in the Times of India group. Since then, I haven't seen any such stories. In fact, I looked at your program uh, very carefully, and if I'm not familiar with some names, my apologies. But, and I can ask for a show of hands in this hall. I will just count India's biggest media organizations, and I will ask you, is there anybody, Times of India group, anybody here? No, 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 that, they are, so I'm, I'm, I'm coming to that, no, I'm coming on. to that. No, I'm, no I'm, we do have some Times group. No, no, I'm coming to that. No, well, yeah. No, no, I'm coming to that. Times of India group, how many? One. India Today group? Sona, okay, you're forgiven, right? <laughs> you are a Purana Papi. India Today group, HT? We had a few HT people. No, no, but I'm, I'm asking for this hall, HT? TV 18, one. So these four groups, Hindu? They're watching it online. No, 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 Hindu, no, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Hindu, Telegraph, ABP, The Tribune, Malayala Manorama. No, no, this is 95% of Indian audiences. Bhaskar, Jagran, Jagran, the biggest readership for any newspaper in the world. So. First of all, these discussions, and it's a good thing that you're doing it, but for us to think that because some of us can criticize the media, which is not available, which, is, which does, doesn't even bother joining us in these debates, uh, we are covering the media is wrong. We first of all have to acquire the expertise to cover the media. So if we cover the media, at least give our fellow media uh, the gift of the competence and training to be able to cover the media. I can t see many stories which are not criticizing the media, but stories that I've seen in many places about this 10% uh, duty. I mean, I, I read those stories and I know this is zero knowledge of media economics, uh, and many such things. But, so, but, no, no, so that, let, yeah, let, no, 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 let me, let me complete, let yeah, yeah, me, yeah, let, let, gonna, no, no, let me complete, just a second, no, 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 let me complete, let me complete, let me complete. Now this is no, no. Arnab's show, no, no, no. this is Abhinandan's no, no. show, once I know, just let me, so, no. you have to, you have to. So I'm not Arnab, you can be Abhinandan, but let me complete, let me complete my argument. Let me complete my argument. Because I want to go on to the rest as well. No, no, I will come to the rest as well. So let me say my piece. Let me say my piece. So. Criticizing the media is not the same as covering the media. You talked about the Express and the Hindu. We never ran stories running down each other, but I do say in Siddharth's presence that the intellectual argument on the nuclear deal in public debate was fought between the Express and the Hindu, and the Express won, right? Many other arguments, the Hindu won. So, okay. but so those are those are intellectual arguments. But we never called Hindu names, or Hindu never called us names. We never said they are leftists. They never said we are right wing. But having said that, coverage. Look at the way Washington Post covers Fox News. They do real coverage, real research. Come out with facts. Give them a chance to get back. Fox News bothers to get back to them. See Wall Street Journal. And they appear on each other's no, no. platforms. Wall Street Journal, which is owned by Murdoch. Wall Street Journal breaks the story on Murdoch's papers tapping people's phones illegally, right? That is done the old-fashioned journalistic way. So if you cover the rest of the media, give them, hmm. Guardian, give, give them the courtesy also of journalistic skills. I am afraid many of you who call yourselves watchdogs have, don't have those skills. Okay. The other thing, you don't okay, now I have to move no, on. No, one thing, no, no, Shikhar, no, hang on. No, 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 Shikhar, no, no. Shikhar, just one second. Okay, no, no, no. Let's, no, no. So, please Madhu, listen to me. No, Madhu, Madhu's, point, Madhu's point, I, I, can't, I, I can't let it be. But Madhu, no, no, you have others. No, Madhu, just let, let others talk. No, no, Madhu's huh? point, because you Shikhar, said... Shikhar, no, no, you're going to have said, to let others speak, man. Come on, one second. Yeah, you'll get your... 
I, you have spoken twice the month. Now, now, now you're doing. You can't, you can't stop me whenever you want to. No, I'm not. No. I have to give everybody a no. certain amount of time, and I okay. urge so, so, you so I, so in, a take, civil, in a civil, in a, in a, in a civil discussion. I'll, did, I'll take twenty others? seconds. Okay, I'll then take please 20 take twenty seconds to answer Madhu's question. You said there's nobody from the Times here. Is there anybody in the Indian media in any organization? Uh, Express, Hindu, Times of uh, uh, Times of uh, Express, Hindu, Hindustan Times, TV18, NDTV, wherever, who can get Vineet Jain to answer three questions for them? So that is the tragedy of how we are covering the media. The big boys today can afford to ignore us. Okay, well, uh, no, let's stick no, with no, the I'm panel. Just one sec, okay, guys. Forward. Okay, one sec. Hang on. Okay, thank you, Shekhar. Siddharth, first of all, did you lose that argument on the on the nuclear deal? <laughs> and sec thank and you secondly, for, thank you for giving me the chance to respond. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and 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 uh, I and, afraid, and also, I was, afraid, I was afraid Shekhar was going to say that I've spoken enough about myself. Now you speak about me. <laughs> Look, uh, let's not revisit the old thing. Um, there were there were points. There was there were issues on which the Express took a clear editorial position. He once ran a piece called Fast Breeder Reactionaries, defending the American view that fast breeders, the fast breeder program should come under safeguards. And we opposed that. We prevailed. But I think at the end, both Express and Hindu lost out for a variety of reasons. The nuclear deal is kind of dead in the water. OK, Sevanti's point that yeah. print tended not to talk about print, and that yeah. was an instruction. Yeah, so, so, was there yeah. some such conventional uh, uh, wisdom? Uh, so let, let's come to the core issue. Um, the fact is that um, I've worked in three media organizations. Bennett Coleman for about eight or nine years, Hindu for about eight, ten years, <clears throat> and The Wire for five, for four years. At the Times of India, there was a clear enunciated policy that there will be, that the political bureau will not cover media or INB ministry except in an approved way. The correspondent who was assigned to INB was actually handpicked by the fourth floor. So things cannot be clearer than that. And stories were occasionally done on, the, on media, and they were typically done by the fourth floor to run down. So for example, Shekhar, you remember when HT and TOI were fighting their circulation wars in Delhi. And each would cling on to some survey or some report and say, we are market leaders. And so they would run these news stories, tendentious news stories as page one anchors. And I think HT also used to do that. Uh, so, Times of India positively discouraged uh, reporting about any serious reporting about the media. And I suspect that in many organizations that is the case. The Hindu, uh, not for any commercial reasons, uh, but I think it simply because it became the norm that you don't, you know, that it may be misinterpreted if they do a story that's critical of a paper that you, that is a commercial rival of some kind. So they tended to, it was more like a, uh, uh, you know, uh, an understanding that you kept off. But there was no commercial reason. The Hindu broke with that uh, tradition during the Radia story. Maybe it did earlier, but I recall during my time there, uh, Mr. Ram is the editor, and uh, I was, um, I think, deputy chief of bureau. And um, we, uh, we said we need to cover the story, and Ram fully agreed. And we, we, we did what the Radia covered about NDTV people, HT, Veer Sangvi, uh, you know, we, we ran the full gamut, right? And uh, after that, when I became chief of bureau of the Hindu, we had a correspondent designated, I think it was Prashant Jha back in the day, who was the media correspondent. Uh, and uh, this, you know, functioned perfectly well. Uh, I believe that after I left, that practice was kind of discontinued. I don't know the reasons for it. Uh, at the Y, we cover the media. Uh, I share Shekhar's uh, broad objection to the framing of this panel as calling out, because you know, calling out is a small, actually, I don't even like that phrase, but uh, you know, where you need to be critical, you will be critical, where you need, like we ran a story the other day on uh, this, uh, this duty on newsprint, where we said, yeah, there is an issue here, but the ills of the Indian print industry run much deeper. And actually, the root cause of the perverse or dysfunctional economics of the newspaper industry uh, lie in the uh, pricing model that Mr. Samir Jain pioneered. And uh, Shekhar said it's impossible to have anybody get three questions 
put an answer from Vinay Jain. There was there was one bugger who managed. Yeah, that the guy from Cobra st Post. Sting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but why got right in there. <laughs> and 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 the answers he got were not very flattering. And we covered that story. Because we covered that story, we got a kind of cease and desist. Uh, we were one of the few to cover the Cobra Post expose. I think I still think that was one of the most shocking exposes of the state of the Indian media. Uh, I say this with all my reservations and caveats about sting operations. And also, it was perhaps quite sloppily done. But it was, it was what, what got highlighted deserved to be covered and commented on in a fair way and you know, giving all organizations a chance to respond. Times chose not to respond in a timely fashion. And when stories were done, then you know, heavy duty legal uh, uh, notices saying, that, was brought out. saying yeah. that we did our own sting operation against this guy. I'm still waiting for the Times of India's reverse sting. Hmm. on, on uh, Cobra Post to be, to be broadcast. And I think we should, we should remind them about this. OK. So Jaggi, um, I've kind of got you know, from Siddharth and I guess some of Shekhar of, of what Sevanti said. But in your view, this entire tendency of, uh, like Shekhar said, that you have to be equipped to be able to report on the media. Uh, so you know, assuming it's the same pool of people HR we're working with, uh, and if they're reporting on 10 other industries, whether it's refining, whether it is, you know, tendering for arms, which I believe they can run into thousands of pages. Um, what is the special skill required to report on the media that it is outside everything else that this economy does churn out? And in your view, this tendency of not reporting on the media, did it do damage or good to the credibility and to the reportage and quality of it? I'll first start with the logic of the Occam's razor. If something is simple and so obvious, it's most likely to be the real explanation. The reason why media never attacked each other, because they all agreed with each other. Why did they need to attack? You had only one version of what is the news, till recently, till the last five or seven years, you have now alternate voices coming and speaking a different kind of language, trying to build a different kind of narrative. You may not agree with the narrative, but narrative did not exist. There was a consensus. So why would, uh, you may occasionally disagree on a nuclear policy or some uh, minor uh, point of economic policy or something like that, but substantially there was a consensus. So why would you uh, attack somebody you agree with? You can just say, I think, I didn't like the way he combed his hair, but otherwise, I agree with him. That's what it is. Don't as far as, me. no, no. <laughs> don't look at me either, because I don't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, the second thing, uh, more important is, I think the separation of uh, media from journalism for a very long time uh, uh, ensured, actually, uh, one of the things I will say about the giants is that they made editors aware of what the finances of the business were. Until that time, I mean, though they may have gone beyond a certain thing and tried to make the editor the uh, ad seller as well, but the problem really is that if you do not understand the business, how are you ever going to report on what's happening? And look at ownership. I mean, 30% is owned by uh, politically exposed persons or politicians. By definition, they're not going to run a media house in a commercial way. Because, and, a lot, and another 30% is owned by big business in, uh, directly or indirectly, right? So 60% of business is going to make the remaining 30%, which is a valid part of the media, unviable. And if journalists are not going to understand this, that if you have a politician running a business, uh, a media business, and largely it is going to be used for laundering money or any such thing, how are you going to make the rest of the media viable? So there are issues like that, and uh, journalists willingly close their eyes to the reality of how they were funded, how uh, they are being paid their salaries, and we know even one or two media houses went into bankruptcy uh, in Andhra and things like that. We only know that after the event, when they go belly up. So I think... That's it, not true just for media. I mean, Satyam Raju won the Golden Peacock. Right. Yeah. And yeah. then next year he was right. in jail. Correct. So, no, so again, you need to I'm understand, sure that's you need to understand the economics of the media in order to be able to critique it. And actually, no journalists have really tried to understand how this business operates, and assuming it is a business at all in the first place. They have been told right from a journalism school that this is not a business. This is some kind of public uh, service that you're doing. So if that is the case, how will they ever write on the media? But isn't, and I'll throw this open to everybody, and everybody can, you know, take their designated time and answer that question. And this time I'm looking at Shekhar. Uh, but uh, Sevanti, uh, you, just before we started this, you said that, you know, I decided to shut it down because there were so many portals that came up, and you, you know, named about half a dozen or more. 
Uh, but when, before these came out, how did news professionals react to your commentary? Uh, was it good? Was it bad? Was it a mix of both? You thought there was an appetite for that? Was there a possibility for self-reflection? Because, uh, because uh, you know, I have found, and, and you know, Shekhar has often said that if you're in the public eye, whether it's politicians or, or a journalist, you have to have a thick skin. And uh, in fact, you've said that politicians tend to have a thicker skin than many others because they're used to taking it and you know, moving on, whereas many others, Not especially in the news. But yeah, but as a generalization. Not politicians. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in today's day, day and age, true. How did people react to it? Was there an appetite for this? Uh, and or, or, or did you think that we're still not ready to look at ourselves and in a nature of critiquing ourselves, but yet remaining friendly with each other? There was, there was definitely an appetite for it in the audience. I mean, in people who consume the media. Uh, and as far as the media itself is concerned, no. I mean, they, you become unpopular very fast. Hmm. Is it on? Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's not, I mean, it's not something that the media understands or likes, and, uh, but people were ready for it, I think, because I, you know, then peop those who are freelance start writing for you, but they don't have access. It's not easy to do it. It's okay to point out, I mean, I, I, what I managed to do with the resources I had is nowhere near, you know, a but tenth that, of what But is there also a fear that many of these people will be in the workforce looking for jobs and the people who they were going to be commenting on? Of course, on? of course. So, no, that's another issue. Why did I shut it down, for instance? It's because there's no one who's going to take it over from you. Senior journalists don't want to be doing this. They just don't want to be doing it. They want proper careers in journalism. It's very difficult to get... I mean, I know you have lots of staff at News Laundry doing all kinds of reporting, but then News Laundry is also doing other things. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to get a very, very good reporter who wants to just come and do this. Because they feel they'll jeopardize also their chances. Also because it's narrow. In, yeah. It's a narrow subject, both. Mm -hmm. They jeopardize their chances, and it's not as exciting as covering things that are happening to the country. Right. Uh, Shikhar, the same question I asked, but uh, uh, another point I'll just throw in, and you can take both. Uh, I was discussing with Jaggi upstairs, that with the coming of social media, uh, does one really need um, to, to have commentary. I mean, I can understand a story of, let's say, X took a loan, defaulted on it, or money was laundered, but general commentary, because I personally believe it keeps you on your toes, and I think it's, it's good to have friendly sparring in, you know, within organizations, which we have, and, you know, inter and intra organizations. But with social media becoming the beast that it is, you think critiquing each other just feeds into that vile nature of they will use this against that. Is it just discrediting the other? So this party will feel that party is discredited, that party feels this party is discredited. So no one's consuming any news media which is cross-ideological. Do you think from the Hoot's time to today, is that a major difference and should it matter? Well, I think people not reading before criticizing is an old disease. It, it did not come with social media, right? And, and then once you put a label, you can say, but, Social media essentially is a place where you go for validation, right? So the left validates the left, the right validates the left, left attacks the right, right attacks the left. So social media is not a place where you go for wisdom, information. I don't want to use expressions like toxicity. So to think that social media somehow uh, supplants anything else is not correct. Because if that was the case, then contrary to what we might think and contrary to what, see, who are we? Uh, Shevanti is an honorable exception in this quartet. Three of us are refugees from what is called mainstream media. Now, this is an expression that Samar Harankar had used once, and I had then objected to it, but that's true. We are refugees from mainstream media. But mainstream media, much as we'd love to diss mainstream media, mainstream media is doing very well around the world. Why are people going back to the New York Times, Washington Post, Guardian, Politico is now mainstream media. People are going there because people know that what they see on social media, etc. It may, they may get their excitement for, for a moment, but they don't trust it. It doesn't give them wisdom. So, uh, so let's not, I think we get imprisoned by social media and we become legends in our own eyes on Twitter, looking at our retweets and our, and, and, and our minds are being gamed by Twitter because we know what will be retweeted. We know what will get praise, what will get and then I get, in a week, at least 100 DMs from people, people saying, I said this, 
you might agree with it, can you share it, right? Uh, so I think let's not take that too seriously. At the same time, I think... Turn it into a revenue model. Because <laughs> it's just you, Twitter, you, it's you, not no, the platform. You have, you, you have to look for revenue models everywhere. And you know, you can do a different session on revenue models. But today in India, the only truly robust and successful revenue model in Indian media is the broadsheet newspaper. That's why I don't like this 10% duty, because India doesn't make good newsprint, and recycled newsprint is more polluting than virgin newsprint that comes from outside. But I think the news, newspaper, oh, more than afford it, and their readers can afford it. But let's, let's not get distracted. Let's look, out, uh, let's look at some basic things. Uh, media must be covered, huh? your essential question. Media must be covered, must be covered robustly. Questions must be asked. In fact, media is much more powerful now than before in all democracies. You should be covered with greater diligence. Look at America, look at the global media. The big deal right now is the gang of four in Silicon Valley. What is it called? Uh, GAFA, GAFA, huh? that is Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, right? Look at the amount of coverage these are now getting. Look at the amount of scrutiny Facebook is being put to. Look at the way Facebook now, and the print is also a beneficiary, but look at the, Facebook, the way Facebook now is funding almost every media event in the world. There was a Reuters conference just recently in Hong Kong where, where the, the moderator, moderator asked for a show of hands that all of you from the best media organizations in the world, how many of you have not taken money from Facebook? How many hands went up? Zero, right? Uh, used, and since you talked about calling out, and I'm not, you, I'm not here for not to speak my mind, you have this conference sponsored essentially by Facebook. You start this conference with a conversation between you and the Facebook CEO in India. Now think of, look at it another way. Suppose really, quote unquote, a, an organization we don't like as refugees, say Bennett Coleman. Many of us are refugees from Bennett Coleman, not me, never. Uh, <laughs> but if, if, Bennett Coleman, if Bennett Coleman held an event like this, on media, right? And started, and sponsored by Adani or Ambani, and started with a conversation between Vineet Jain and Gautam Adani or Mukesh Ambani, or if the print did that, you guys will go apocalyptic, right? So, so calling out is, huh? So that's a good thing, so I'll just. I said apocalyptic, I apoplectic. didn't say apoplectic. apoplectic. You will say apocalypse now, right? Okay. So I so, deliberately use apocalyptic. So, so, so I'm saying that calling out is a loaded thing, right? So just because you have this, now I'm not saying that because of this your content is loaded. I'm just saying that calling out and judging people is a loaded thing to do. Question people on facts, question people on their economics, figure out why job losses are taking place. Don't question people for laying off people, employers lay off people because they can't afford to pay. Right. So, so that's, that's my point. So. Um, Sid, coming to you, but since you did mention this, I think the assumption is that because you would do it, you don't expect it to be done to you. My point is this, and because you, you know, mentioned this, we're not at all self-conscious about that. You're right. You're right that almost every media event is sponsored by Facebook. Okay, let me finish. Uh, every media yeah, event just doesn't... Like uh, no, I, no, but every, just like, no, let no. me finish. No, no, no. You, yeah, don't you, do no, 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 let me no, finish. You, no, one interrupts no, no, you. You are getting away with it. Every I media, not, every media event does not feature Facebook people. Did I just... Have I finished? You know, Shekhar, I must humbly request you, just like you get a runway to talk uninterrupted, you must learn to give that courtesy to another person as well. Okay? That's very important. And I think there's a tendency of saying that since... I know this shit, I know best, I will talk over everyone. I'm sorry, that is discourteous. I will not interrupt you, you don't interrupt me or others, that would be great. So I think that is a very valid question, and I think it should be asked. But because someone asks it of us, doesn't mean we won't ask it of others. We don't believe he who has not sinned raised the first stone. Of course, we're all compromised in some way or the other. To what extent, is it ideological? Is it financial? Is it political? And that must be questioned, because maybe this question asked by 10 people will make us find someone who is not Facebook. Maybe we'll charge all these people 10,000 bucks to enter. But just because, and I think you must call it out, and you must run a piece on it. Because I don't believe 
that I cannot be called out because I am too cool for school. Please call us out, but that means everybody should call everybody out, whether it is the quality of their content, whether it's the nature of the finances, or whether it is just bad journalism. And nobody has God's word. And there is a problem with legacy media editors thinking, there is God's word and there's everybody. The only true thing is mathematical theorems, and journalism is not that. Thank you. Please, go ahead. I will, I've, you know, because I have gone, I'll let you so respond I've, and then we can talk to I've done my bit. I've done my bit of calling out, which was to make a point that calling out is not the issue. For me, the story is the domination of a media group. Facebook is a media group. The domination of a media group on the global media, and global media's economics is now linked to what is happening with this group of four, because all our revenues are being vacuum cleaned by them. So if you look at the economic problems of global media, global news media, you have to, I'm not saying somebody is right or wrong, but these are issues that have to be questioned. Now, the question I have to ask myself, also as a refugee, but as, a, as, a, as an old media person is, can you go on questioning the people who sponsor you? You question the corporates who sponsor you all the time. But can you sponsor, can you question media companies that sponsor you? That's a tricky question. All of us have which, to find answers. Yeah, and which must be asked. And I think just because it is asked to me doesn't make it an invalid question. Sorry, Sevanti, you were saying something before we men just no, no. hog the conversation. Uh, uh, when you're through with your calling out debate, <laughs> I would just like to Please. So finish that first. It's done. Please go, go ahead. Go, go, go. It's done. <laughs> Okay, this term calling out is narrow, and I have a problem with it. We are talking about two, three things. You're talking about media being a beat, mm -hmm. which it is not. Now it's become one in the last, let's say, 10 years, and that's the business of media. I you think you, no, uh, no, I think actually the thing is the mic moves with you, so you got to like, uh, yeah, that's not, that's so the, so, but she moves her face now, so mother, so okay. you just have to move, mother, yeah, just. All right, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, the trick is if you keep it touching your chin, then no matter where your chin goes, but the mic goes. But booming. No, it's okay. Okay, so if you can hear me, I'm saying there are two issues. One is media accountability. Another is just covering media as a beat. It's a huge beat. Now. I mean, it's a huge industry. There are many, many thousand crores in it in India. Uh, so how regular is the coverage? How thorough is it? That's one. And two, media accountability is looking at your finances, looking at the, no, there's so many, there's so much business press in India. They don't look at the finances of the media, I don't think, anywhere near the way they should. It's not a regular activity. So that, again, is part of being a beat. Thirdly, regulation. You know, Media accountability is also ensured through regulation. We have the press council, which is not supposed to have teeth. We have a self-regulatory NBSA, which is not, doesn't have teeth. So any confident country and a confident media ought to have proper regulation in place, which makes things happen, okay? I mean. Okay, uh, we have to end a question and answer because I don't want the audience to uh, lose the chance of, of having a panel such as this is not get questions because we have overshot. So I know soft-spoken Jaggi and soft-spoken Siddharth got lesser time, so I will let them take the first set of questions and whatever is left, you know, Shekhar and Sevanti can take. And uh, since I am just uh, a, a new... Okay, soft-spoken Sevanti also. Yes, yeah, soft-spoken Sevanti also. So let's start from the back. We ha do we have any questions there? And then I'll move in front. Oh, no questions, so then we can continue with our little... Okay, sorry, we have one here. I think they'll all be coming for jobs to one of these people next. That's why they have no questions. Uh, so my, my question is not really about calling out in the sense of a negative coverage, but I'm just talking about positive, not just positive, but covering what you talked about, Sevanti. Um, I'm a PR professional who has in the past handled media. Um, and there used to be a beat on called media and entertainment, which was covering media. Um, that seems to not be... Um, I mean, that was very little. It was hard to push the agenda of, for example, I was handling a small uh, town, B-town radio 
channel, and it was very difficult to get the point across that the country needed privatization of radio further, etc., whatever the agendas were. So why is it that it is so difficult uh, to actually cover media itself, not necessarily calling out. Sivanti, uh, do you guys want to take that? Uh, why, is that why, is, why is that so difficult since there used to be such a beat? Largely because I think uh, uh, those who want to be media persons are obviously looking to be in media. So I think they would definitely be careful about uh, the, unless you completely dislike somebody and you know you're never going to go there for a job or for ad or anything then, yeah, it works. But otherwise, I think people are very careful about it. Most journalists I know do not want, however much they may rubbish other journalists or other media that they think is performing below par, they will not say that openly. So that, that is one part why individuals do not take. Organizations do not take because they are a club. I mean, I mean except for the, as you say, the dropouts, uh, like uh, some of them here, I think most of them actually have their uh, commercial interests are very similar. Hmm. So I think one will, uh, I think the proprietor will tell you not to take on the other yeah, guy. Yeah. But nothing warms my heart as much as you, Siddharth and Shekhar clubbing yourself as one group. Huh? It, I, gad gad ho gaya mera dil. Yeah. But, but, and, uh, 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 but he's the guy wearing Listen, saffron. Jaggi and I have worked together for a long time in the same organization. Okay, so after this we're going to hold hands and say umbai or whatever it is. Okay, go uh, Sid. Yeah, I don't think of myself as... Uh, as a refugee from uh, mainstream media, I think of myself as a defector from big media. And that's why I don't have a problem uh, pointing fingers at big media. Uh, I think we are redefining the mainstream, uh, quite honestly. Uh, the reason why, first of all, I would contest, uh, ma'am, your, your suggestion or claim that there was ever a media beat. Um, you know, the fact is that there's never been any consistent reporting of the media across uh, big media platforms. There hasn't been that. Episodic, perhaps. Today, a major reason, or the, the major reasons why this doesn't happen uh, is because the largest, I mean, I'm offering a hypothesis. Maybe people can agree or disagree. The largest media stories of the last four or five years have revolved around political pressure from this government on the media. How do you cover a story like the exit of Bobby Ghosh from the Hindustan Times before his contract runs without perhaps if you're a media proprietor, triggering the same set of processes that compelled HT to get rid of him, right? So if you were to cover that story honestly, then you would, you would irritate people in government. If you were to cover the exit of Punya Prasoon Vajpayee from uh, ABP mm -hmm. News, you would irritate people in government. If you were to cover the uh, exit of my former colleague, Dr. Harish Kharev from Tribune, you would irritate people in government. If you were to cover stories of uh, if you were to do stories of news reports, totally innocuous news report of Amit Shah's assets having grown between his last, whenever he filed his affidavit, and I think in 2013, or, sorry, in 2016, when he joined the Rajya Sabha from Gujarat, and for which he had a perfectly, as it turned out, perfectly valid explanation of some property that his mummy owned being sold or whatever. Times of India and DNA run stories. So 300% uh, growth in Amit Shah's assets. The stories vanish online. And there's no explanation given. How do you cover the story sure. uh, without irritating Amit Shah, right? So, so that's a major factor. And the second factor, of course, is that a lot of the stories also revolve around corporate pressure on media houses in the sense of, uh, you know, whether it's defamation cases or ads being withdrawn. Uh, uh, and you know, because so, the kind of leverage the government yeah, has. So, so these are all, you know, essentially, you know, proprietors are risk averse people. And just as they, have, as they have trimmed their sales on the coverage of anything that is contentious, similarly, they keep off media. I think that's the hypothesis I would offer. And I think it's quite plausible. Okay, and I have one more. I, I want to do this. It's unrelated, but I just thought it would be fun. Uh, you know, uh, because Commenting on each other should not just be about discrediting someone who has an opposing ideological point of view. I think if you see something good, that can be called. If you see something bad, that can be called. Now, Swaraj and Vaya are as dissimilar as it can be. So, Siddharth, tell us two things about Swaraj that you love. <laughs> and Jaggi, tell us two things about Vaya that you love. And I'll give... I'll, I'll give Shekhar the last word, but that's not yet whenever I'm told that you tell us two things about news laundry that you love. <laughs> Come on, let's, 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 let's learn to love so this, each other this, a little bit. This love fest, I, I don't know where this is going, but... Uh... Okay, 
hang on. Swaraj, this, this is going to be important. We got to listen Swaraj to this. Swaraj and I both have the same sponsor. How's that? Oh my <laughs> and, and we love them. <laughs> and we want them to keep supporting each other. They're supporting us both again, right? That's, that's you know, we okay, have... Cop a, out, cop uh, out. Okay, IPSMF. Uh, no, the, uh, seriously speaking, what, uh, you know, we um, recognize that not just Swaraja, but there is a whole new uh, ecosystem of, for want of a better term, right-wing media. Uh, they may characterize themselves differently, uh, and I don't mean it in a pejorative uh, sense, uh, which exists, has traction, and needs to be taken seriously. And so we have tried our, our hat tip to the work Jaggi and colleagues are doing is to actually be, we do a, a regular column where we keep off any, you know, edit, basically presenting to our readers what is it that the, uh, it's called right side up, and we began it during the election, and we are keeping it going looking at what is it, like what are the major stories or issues that Swarajya or there's something called right, right log or right log, right log. Uh, uh, which, uh, you know, and a few others who are part of that ecosystem. So that's our hat tip. And of course, Jaggi uh, is somebody that we love because okay. he's always very civilized in all interactions. Right. Jaggi, two things about why that you love. Love. <laughs> well, I think the fact that they left mainstream and uh, big media and thought that even though they did not necessarily have a dissimilarity of view that they felt that they needed to demonstrate that there could be yet uh, something to the thing and the thing. I think that's courage for people to, uh, people who are sitting on a high perch to come and say, look, okay, okay, I'll start all over again from the ground up. I think that's something to be admired, uh, even though we might disagree on every single point. Mm. The <laughs> and the second? Second is, I think... Um, <laughs> He's reaching. He's like, kuch no, to no. I think I admire the point that if he fails, uh, the ecosystem doesn't fail. But if I fail, the ecosystem will fail. My nar alternative narrative is very, more important to this country than his alternative narrative because that somebody will carry on the flag no matter what he does. Hmm. But in my case, I think I'm one of the people who started the process early. And I think I need to go on. I see. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> so what you love about him is that even if he fails, <laughs> the, the narrative goes. Okay, and Shekhar, I've been given the time out. Two things about news running that you love. Manisha, I think the first is quite easy. Why are you leaking my answer sheet? People leak. People exactly. leak. Please do not cut into Shekhar's time. People, so that no, no, it's okay, it's okay. Business. We are not fine. People, people leak question papers. This guy is leaking my answers. So, so Manisha, I'll tell you why. Manisha and some more stuff on news laundry, because I'll tell you the big problem in Indian media. Uh, having been around for a long time. Indian media has never been as humorless as it is now. There is no humor. There is no satire. We take ourselves so seriously now. You have a fantastic you know? boy. This boy is amazing. I've seen him. But he's the yeah. only one, right? So when was that humor? <laughs> That's... <laughs> He, listen, uh, Madhu, no, even in the there emergency... A lot of channels offering humor. Even in what? the emergency, B.D. Trivadi wrote his middle article in the Times of India, and if you read it carefully, there was a lot of humor, right? And satire. So, there's no humor, no satire, no irony. Manisha gives us that, and, okay, and, thank you. And, and, and second thing? And, 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 we need, and we need a lot more of it. And second, I write, I like the irreverential view that you have of the media world. So the fact that you are not faced by people and their seniority is a very good thing. Because, you know, I love... <laughs> I, 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 I love... I love insubordination. I love insubordination. And I'll tell you, since you talked about media covering the media, and you said, do we welcome us being covered? I will tell you, in recent years, the only media organization that really covered the media well and intelligently has been Mint, right? And that's been primarily because of one person there, Shuchi Bansal. And Shuchi has created, has then built and mentored other people around her uh, who have covered the media well. And one of them covered, did a story on the Express, in fact, took out a whole internal email of mine, published the entire email. In the Mint? In a, in the Mint, in a year that in which we had done badly, so it was an admonition from me as the company's CEO, because I've always had two jobs, right? Uh, as the company's CEO, she published it, and with some implications and all, and we were not happy with it. We were quite irritated with it. But what did we do? By In 48 hours, we figured that she had done that job well. She had covered all her bases, and what did we do? We hired her as our media correspondent. Good job. Right? So we're, we're her, looking out for her, her, her now. Her name is Archana Shukla. 
Archana Shukla. Archana Shukla. Shukla. Okay. So, so good media coverage is something that we also appreciate. Okay. Thank you all and, and, and uh, for being such a wonderful audience. Thank you, panel, for, for uh, keeping it spirited and fun. Always a learning experience to... Sevanti, uh, but she, she doesn't love or hate, she's Zen. She's Buddha. Okay. So, or you do? Okay. <laughs> so thank you, audience. We all love each other.